And we are live. Welcome to another Saturday Live. I'm Fabian Holland. Um, hope everyone is doing well. And today in this video, we're talking about dynamics and why they're so important, why I feel they're so important with acoustic guitar and specifically fingerstyle acoustic guitar. Um, but my name's Fabian, and if you if you don't know me, if you don't know this channel, then I'm a guitarist and singer songwriter. And hold on, bit of a technical issue. If anybody's out there, ah, no, excellent condition, excellent uh, connection. Okay, fine, all good. Where was I? If anybody's out there, just just drop a message in the chat and let me know that you can hear me okay. Uh, yeah, if you don't know me, then I'm Fabian Holland. I'm a guitarist, a singer-songwriter, and on this channel, we basically talk about everything related to being a guitarist and singer-songwriter. So we talk a lot about guitars, specifically acoustic guitar techniques uh, and finger style, and we talk about performing live and we talk about uh, recording and songwriting and uh, everything in between so uh, yeah welcome and thanks for joining this live stream and I go live every Saturday evening at 9 p.m. Central European time um, I'm here in Berlin and uh, yeah it's been a wonderful day. Had a bit of bit of rain today, but apart from that, it was very, very nice. Um, yeah, so we're talking about dynamics, and this is something we'll see how long we go on for with this, you know, um, because it's a, a very specific topic, and you know, um, there's uh, you can't dive in too deep on this. Although possibly you can, but we'll see. Um, basically, we're going to talk about what are dynamics, uh, why they're important, and what techniques, basically, I use uh, to achieve these these techniques, these these dynamics. Um, yeah. So, first off, what are dynamics? Um, it's basically volume intensity and tone this is how i feel dynamics are um and with volume obviously you there's louder parts and there's quiet parts and that can be also related to how intense that you're playing um but it, actually i feel there's a lot of a lot to do with it is tone and kind of what sort of tone you're getting with your your playing specifically with acoustic guitar um, so that's what I feel dynamics are um, and I feel why they're important is you know I, I try and think about what we're trying to do here or what I'm trying to do uh, with my with my music and I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, convey emotions from my brain, what's ever going in here, and translate that as best as possible through my fingers and onto the guitar. Um, you know, and and it's just emotional communication. I feel that's what I'm I'm trying to do at the end of the day. You know, uh, and I feel like dynamics. Are one of the best ways to do this um, you know it's a really effective way of portraying the emotion you know um, it would it also makes it very a lot more interesting if you play something very simple you know I would rather I would rather play something very simple but have lots of dynamics in there then try and play something complicated that doesn't have too many dynamics. You know, um, this is this is this is always what I think about. 
Hey, Hans, how you doing? Good to have you. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> and you are one of the best at it. Thank you. That's very kind. I still haven't replied to your last message about preamps yet, but uh, I'll get to that. I'll get to that for sure. That's an interesting topic right there. Um, but yeah, so so dynamics can be very, very important. I feel are very, very important with what I do and how I do it, you know. Um, they can add depth and emotion and tension to the music. Um, and I'm going to do some examples today of of how I use dynamics in my playing and in my songs, you know. And you can you can apply this to kind of everything. Um, you can not just playing guitar, you know. You can apply this with your with your voice with certain points. Um, in the song i feel you know um it's it, i think it's also relate like it's also knowing when to to bring in the dynamics uh when it's the important parts you know this is also a skill as well um but we're just talking about why they're important um and let me know in the comments you know if you if you're someone that likes to use dynamics in your in your playing or maybe you want to use more dynamics in your playing um, or maybe you you don't feel like you need to use dynamics in your playing you know um, let me know in the comments below but I feel like it is one of the most important things when I to convey emotion um, aside from the notes it's 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 how you play those notes which is which is really important. As I said, it adds depth, uh, it adds emotion and tension. Uh, it's really good for tension, you know, really, really good for tension, I find. Um, and it gives the listeners a way to connect to the music a bit more, I find, you know. Um, if you make a simple melody, if you, you're playing just a simple melody, but you play it with lots of dynamics and that create that creates depth and emotion and tension um i feel the listeners can connect a lot more with that you know um so that's that's how i feel about it and just go to the comments uh hans says I have some great recordings from studios of me that are without dynamics. Okay. Yeah. I can listen to them. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can, so you're saying like, so you're saying that you have great recordings that don't use dynamics where you're not using dynamics. Oh, you can't listen to them. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I misread that. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, I I also have recordings where I was not focusing too much on the dynamics. You know, um, for sure. Uh, but the, the I find the more I play, the longer I play, the more the more important they are for me to bring this into my music. Um, and I find the longer I play a song the the better I know a song uh the more I can introduce dynamics in the song you know I f I think about it a bit like if I was driving a car you know and if if I if I just learned to drive a car I'll be too focused on you know uh here in here in Europe, we have we have like gear sticks, you know, we use the gear and we have the clutch and everything, you know, so it's when you're driving a car, you know, it takes a while to learn how to do that. And you've got to think about the, the mirrors, looking at the mirrors and the gear, you know, and everything like that. And if you're too focused on the actual mechanics of like driving and you're not actually focused on the road and what you're doing and where you're going, you know. Uh, then it's a lot harder to kind of to fo just focus on the road and what you're doing, you know. Um, I can't remember why I brought up this uh, this thing in the first place, but <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. So it's this kind of 
analogy of if you don't know a song well enough, if it's too complicated as well, this is why I like to to bring a bit more simplicity into my playing, especially when I introduce dynamics. If a song is too complicated, I'm focusing too much on the techniques and trying to just get the notes right. Um, and I can't really think about the dynamics too much, you know. Uh, so I feel it's better to have... Yeah, that's why the analogy worked with the car. Uh, you know, whereas if you've been driving for years, then, you know, it's you can change gear. You, you don't even think about it. You're just focused on the road and the driving. Um, it's the same kind of thing. You know, I'm just when I'm playing, I'm not thinking about. I need to put my finger here. I need to make sure I need to make sure I get that chord right and put this finger here. You know, I'm not thinking about that at all. My my fingers just automatically do that just because I've been playing the song for so long, you know. Um, so I can really focus on the dynamics. Um, not always. Obviously, there's other things to think about, especially if I'm improvising or something. I'm thinking about which notes I want to choose. Um, but in certain moments, when I when I really want to introduce lots of dynamics and, and bring bring in emotion to a, to a certain point in a song or tension or something like this um i know that i can uh, i know that i can focus on that and just do that if that makes sense i hope that makes sense <laughs> on that long-winded analogy um yeah so we're talking about if you just joined us we're talking about dynamics and i'm talking about why i feel like they're so important and why possibly people overlook them a little bit uh, and think it's just about oh playing playing quietly or playing loud but I think there's there's much more to it than that um, so it's a way listeners can connect to the music and uh, it can really make a performance unique and make it more human I find you know uh, if you're playing something with hardly any dynamics it's uh yeah exactly like like han said it's robotic precisely thank you uh, it's it's uh yeah it's it's just you're kind of going through the motions and you're not really thinking about the performance this is a lot of this i find is is related to performance um a lot of what I do is 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 about the performance, whether it's recording or whether it's performing live. Um, you know, it's a, it's about the performance. And um, even recently, you know, I find like if I'm in the studio, there was some moments when I was recording on my last albums. You know, if you've been in the studio for a, for a while and you're getting tired, and maybe it's like. I can't remember now if it was like the fifth or sixth take of something um, or maybe even later than that, like the seventh or eighth take or something like this. Um, I found I was just going through the motions, you know. I was just, I wasn't really, the performance wasn't there at that point, you know. Um, I mean, a lot of that had to do with because I was tired or whatever. Um but I find that when it, in terms of recording, I find uh, the best the best takes are usually the first within the first kind of three. I find are the best takes because it's fresh and you're, you know, you can you can really you're you're yeah it's fresh you you can express yourself you can introduce dynamics you're you're not thinking about it too much. Um, I find you can overthink things a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's totally agree with like robotic and this sort of sound, you know, if you played something that was just had no dynamics, it's, um, it feels less, less human, you know, um, so it can definitely make a performance more unique for sure. Uh, and it's a great way to convey emotions, you know. I find it really hard, or I, I did find it really hard, especially at the beginning, to 
convey emotions through an instrument you know but i think find it's a lot easier th- with singing through a voice um because we've been using our voice voices for so many years you know um i find it's a lot easier to to kind of express emotion in a, in a voice uh whether you're whether you're speaking or whether you're singing you know um i find it's a lot harder to do that in an instrument especially if if you're maybe you haven't been playing that instrument for for too long you know uh, but the longer you play it the the more you get in tune with it and the more you can introduce dynamics to express that emotion you know and a lot of it is to do with control i find so i have lots of control over my playing and especially on my right hand when i'm picking so i can really i have the control to to play really loudly or very very quietly you know um and everything in between and i can also do that with with each finger as well you know so i can decide which notes i play loudly and which notes i can play quietly so this this really helps with with finger style guitar you know um and it's a lot like how a piano player does it you know when some you hear a really experienced piano player um you know they're really able to control how how loud or or softly they play each key you know so every finger has ultimate control over that um and uh yeah it's a it's a way of 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 i feel um telling who a very experienced player you know um yeah so uh that's how i feel about dynamics and why they're important um so i talked about can make performances more unique and human and uh convey emotions effectively um softer passages can evoke a sense of intimacy or vulnerability this is these are these are sort of definitely feelings that i i try to convey when i'm playing you know um vulnerability um yeah intimacy these are sort of things what i'm trying to trying to convey when i'm playing you know um and then louder sections can create excitement or intensity you know um so that's that's ultimately why why they i feel they're so important and it also creates you know it creates a musical contrast as well um it makes it more interesting for the audience for sure you know um yeah okay han says uh some of my favorite guitarists were piano players first yeah that's interesting uh who were they then if you could uh let me know in the in the chat let me know some of those guitarists that were piano players first um that's really interesting yeah i'd love to be able to play p- the piano i'm i'm just kind of i just teach myself really you know it's very easy to pick up the piano you know because it's all kind of laid out there it's very nice to compose on the piano i like to write melodies on the piano because it's just so so easy Eric Johnson. Eric Johnson, yeah. He played did he play piano? Okay. Eric Johnson. I need who's Eric Johnson? I need to check out him now. It rings a bell. Eric Johnson. American guitarist, uh, vocalist, and composer. 
Okay. He had a single Cliffs of Dover. Won the Grammy Award for Best Rock Instrumental Performance. Nice. Okay. I don't know if I've heard his stuff before. I'll check him out. Eric Johnson. Nice. Thanks for that. Yeah, from Texas. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's... it's uh, I feel like a lot of a lot of experienced players use lots of dynamics, you know. Um and I try I try to do this in my playing. And and especially if I know a song very well, I try and introduce dynamics because I don't have to think about all the ins and outs of the chords and the notes that I'm choosing on the in the song. Um, so I'll do a little song now. I'll do a little example of, um, of what I'm talking about. These are fresh strings. They might go out of tune a little bit. So this is a song called uh, Banks of the D that was on my first album. And it's actually a, um, it's a traditional song from England, from the north of England. It's a, it's a mining song. So when the miners would get too old, then they would lose their their work because they they weren't as uh, strong and fit as uh, the young miners. And I'm going to try and, uh, especially it has sort of, it, it doesn't really have a, um, a chorus as such, this. It just has like a, a verse and then it goes into this instrumental bit uh, where I just go over the chords and I, I basically improvise. And during this section where I improvise, then um, I'm going to, this is where I add the dynamics. Um, so I'll just play it and then we'll, we'll, we'll look at it a bit. And if you have any questions or comments, um, then just drop them in the, uh, in the comment section and, uh, I'll, uh, we'll look at them after the song. It's called Banks of the D. Saturday night by the banks of the sea And I met an old man under stress I could see And I sat down beside him and to me he did say Oh, I can't get employment for me hair, it's turned grey Fifty and six. If 
strike again That's what I'd raffle me pigs I'd raffle them, I'd sell them And I'd haul them away But I can't get employment for me hair It's turning grey Last Wednesday night To the reckoning I went To the culinary office I went straight for her nest And I got me wage packet And I was walking her way When they gave us me notice For me hair it's turned grey Oh, I am an old miner, aged fifty and six. If I could get lots, what a raffle me picks. I'd raffle them and I'd sell them, and I'd haul them away. But I can't get employment for me here. It's turn gray. So I maybe maybe overdid it with the uh, the dynamics there, but I just wanted to to really emphasise uh, how I use dynamics and how they can um, really be effective in certain moments. You know, uh, so I hope I hope uh, that was a good example of that. Um, yeah, let's head to the comments. Uh, do, 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 do. Do you listen to Freddie White? Um, no. No, I don't. That's another one. Let me check out Freddie White. I'm... 
Eric Johnson, Freddie White. Okay. Ah, he's an Irish singer-songwriter. I think I've heard of him before. I think I might have heard some stuff of his before. Yeah. He has a song called Martha. Yeah, I think I might have heard some stuff. Yeah, I need to listen back to some of this stuff. Um, yeah, okay. Freddie White and Eric Johnson. I'm going to write these down because uh, each live stream <laughs> I'm writing like I have a list of, of people to listen to. Uh, Eric Johnson and Freddie White. It's Freddie White, wasn't it? Yeah. Freddie White. I could just watch this live stream back and not actually have to write it down during the live stream, but I'm just being lazy. <laughs> uh, he was big on dynamics. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And if anybody else has any great examples of players that that really are, are great at dynamics, um, then uh, let me let us know. Let everyone know in the in the chat. Classic cover of Parting Glass. Yeah, I saw that he did Parting Glass. Nice. Hi, Elvis. How's it going? Good to have you in the live stream. Hey, Aaron. How's it going? Yeah. Uh, Glenn Hansard. Yeah. Amazing, amazing voice. He's an uh, amazing songwriter as well. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible stuff. Yeah. Are you seeing him live as well? Yeah. i never seen Glenn live. I'd like to. He has that guitar, doesn't he, that's like basically has a hole in it. Um, not, the, not just the sound hole. It's basically because he strums it so hard. Um, he was in that, uh, I think there was this film as well that he was in. It was really good. Once, maybe, it might have been. I saw that ages ago. Yeah. Um, has anyone heard of the band The Gloaming? Uh, they're an amazing band from Ireland. I've always wanted to see them live, but they sell out just as soon as they go. They do a, put out a concert. They, they sell out. It's called The Gloaming. Uh, and they're, they're really... Uh, Amazing for, for dynamics. All of them are virtuoso musicians and um, incredible, incredible players. Um, I really recommend listening, giving them a listen. Uh, and they really utilize dynamics in their, in pretty much every song. Um, they're just unbelievable. Yeah. So if you just joined us, we're talking about dynamics and I talked about what dynamics are and why I feel they're important. Um, and now we're going to talk about a little bit about uh, the techniques that I like to use when, when doing dynamics. And basically some of the ways that I... Um, that I use, that I like to use dynamics. So you saw in, in when I was playing that song, a, a big one that I like to use for dynamics is hammer-ons and pull-offs. So the hammer-on is like this. So you, if you don't know what a hammer-on is, you play the, the string, play the notes, and then you're literally hammering on with your finger. 
And then a pull off is basically the opposite of that. So you're pulling off the string. So you play it fretted note and then you're pulling off like this. Um, and I just use them a lot. And they're great for dynamics because they, 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 they give a very intense sound very quickly. You know, um, and they're just really good just to use, especially with one finger, you know, because a lot of the time I'm, I'm kind of playing this, this bass line, you know, and then I play a melody over the top and I kind of, when I want to use lots of dynamics, I like to use these hammer-ons and pull-offs. Especially if you're playing in an open tuning, and I'm playing in dadgad here. Uh, I'm not playing in open D, I'm playing in actually A minor, but I'm still using lots of open strings, and this can really help with hammer-ons and pull-offs. It's pretty much every string I, can, I know I can pull off and use that open string if I need to, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Aaron says the movie Once is fantastic. Yeah, it's amazing. It's an amazing movie. It's been out for years, isn't it? I should, uh, I should watch that again. It's a really good one. And Aaron also says, I have not, but would definitely check them out. Always on the lookout for new music. Uh, do you mean The Gloaming? Yeah, check them out. They're really... The gloaming. It's uh, just kind of spelt like the gloaming. I think it's spelt like that. And they're really famous in Ireland, and they're all like um, they're all in the solo artists individual solo artists it's a bit of a a um let's just see if i can come up with a a link to show everyone or something but i can't at the moment um but yeah they're all like individual artists themselves you know recording artists and they basically came together i can't remember when they they first formed the group but they came, all came together um, and uh, created this. Yeah, yeah, so check them out. Um, but, I mean, lots and lots of great players. I find it's a way of, when you, when you really hear players, or any musician really, and singers, you know, use lots of dynamics really effectively. It's a really... For me, it's a good indication to 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 know that they're really good, experienced players, you know, um, and very proficient in their in their instrument. Um, because it's all it's all to do with control, really. It's all to do with control. Um, and there's so talking about sort of techniques. There's a few other techniques that I like to use. And another one can be slides as well. So you go from one note sliding down um, or sliding up, you know. Can be very effective as well. Um, it's anything I find that just can be a little different to just...
playing it standard way, you know. So I find a lot of it is to do, it is to do with volume, but it's also to do with the kind of the texture of that sound and that note. And I find just bringing in hammer-ons and pull-offs and slides um, just kind of add a little bit different texture to the sound. Um, you know, so that's that's uh, that's how I feel about that. And also vibrato as well. Vibrato can be a good one. Um, there's sort of different ways you can use vibrato with the finger itself, the left hand, or just actually, you know, you might see me sort of shaking the guitar. This is another way that you can add vibrato. You know, and this, I feel this is also adds to the dynamics because it just brings in another different kind of texture of sound, you know. Um, Aaron says, unrelated, but are you using an Elliot Capo? Yes, I am. Well spotted. <laughs> I'm trying to pick up a new Capo for my OM03 Laravie. Nice. Yeah. As it has a one three quarter nut, which width and doesn't work well with my Shub Capos. Yeah. And it's quite wide, isn't it? Um, I can't, I don't know what, how wide these are. Loudons are pretty, are pretty wide as well. I use Shub as well, you know, Shub are quite, quite good, you know, as well. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're cheap. Um, but still, still works pretty well, I find, you know, but maybe yours is, is wider. I don't know. Uh, I can't remember the the width of this um, this one here, but uh, yeah, Elliot Capos are amazing. They're really amazing. I mean, there's lots of great ones out there. You know, you don't have to spend. I mean, Elliot Capos are expensive as well. You know, um, but there's some other great ones as well. G7 Capos, they're really good. I don't actually have any. Um, myself but you know I I just use the Elliot for everything because it's just it's lasted me like 15 years and I've it's just been great you know but it's it's a thing of beauty it, you know it's it's like a piece of jewelry <laughs> you know um, and it, I just really like it yeah um, yeah that's a nice uh, <laughs> side topic love it I love to talk about the Elliot Capos. Um, yeah, so so these are some of the techniques. But uh, let me know in the comments if you have any other techniques that you like to use um, for sort of introducing dynamics and different textures, you know. Um, I'm actually a very simple player when it comes to sort of techniques, I guess, you know, I don't really use many percussion techniques, um, like a lot of uh, contemporary acoustic guitarists, you know, um, I don't really use any, like even, even just with my thumb, you know, some, some people kind of use that with their thumb to use a bit of, add a bit of rhythm, I don't really do that, um, I'm very, I like to keep things very simple, like I said before. I like to keep my techniques as simple as possible, although I do use these hammer-ons and pull-offs and do play fast frills sometimes, but um, in in generally I like to keep things as simple as I can um, because I, I don't, I want to focus solely as much as I can on the dynamics and I like to improvise as well and all these different things, you know. So I feel if I had too many techniques that I had to focus on, um, 
that would kind of focus me away a little bit from from the actual performance. Um, I'm very heavy on performance, on like doing the best performance possible that I can um, and bringing all these uh, musical emotions and adding depth and tension in uh, in my music. So, yeah, nothing to, to, to give, you know, to say like anyone that, that likes to use these different techniques, you know, um, finger tapping and percussive techniques and all these kind of things, you know, um, nothing against that. Uh, it's, it's, um, I just feel like for me, I know I would focus too much on, <laughs> on getting, getting everything right and focus too much on the, the technical side of things when I want to really focus as much as I can, um, on, on these things, the dynamics, improvising, um, stuff like this, if that makes sense. Good afternoon, Dog Food Studios. How's it going? Oh, good evening here. Uh, good afternoon where you are. What time is it where you are? It's uh, Patrick. Shall I call you Patrick? That's Patrick. He's a friend of mine. <laughs> good to have you on the live stream nice uh yeah glad you could finally make one um i actually did an interview with patrick and i put it up on my community page i don't know if it's there anymore but um and we talked about the difference we have in songwriting um i'm probably gonna publish that as a youtube video at some point um, I just need to get round to it, but it was a really interesting video uh, interview I did with him. I uh, just thought I mentioned that. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about if you just joined us, we're talking about dynamics and using different dynamics and uh, what dynamics are. I talked about why they're important, and now we're talking about the the different techniques I use to introduce. Uh, different dynamics um, and one of the things as well so I talked about hammer-ons pull-offs slides vibrato um, I find a lot of it is also in the right hand and having control over the right hand fingers uh, and you know being able to have control individually of the fingers you know so I might be like I might want to my my bass line here, for example, to be quite quiet. And then I want the melody over the top to kind of be louder, you know. So it's having control over the different fingers, not only in certain moments being loud and quiet, but have, being able to have that control um, over the, the fingers individually, you know, which ones are going to, usually the, the, the middle finger here plays the, the top line melody. So I'm able, and the thumb will play the bass line, so I'm able to sort of be a lot softer with my thumb, be a be a lot harder with my finger stuff like this you know um this this is a really great way of adding lots of dynamics just just in the different melody and bass line that you're playing you know um or that i'm playing and this is just the way that i do it you know and the, the how i introduced dynamics in my music um and I also find as well that it's it's not only to do with the volume, but it's also to do with the tone, um, the tone of the guitar. And this is something that I might look into a bit more in the future. Um, but I do use nails. I used to. I've been through everything. And let me know in the comments below if you are a nail player, if you're a uh, just a 
a finger player or if you're a pick player um, that'll be interesting to see what people how different um, you know all th all three of those things have completely different tone I find um, and produce a completely different sound you know I find so I'm I play with my nails I used to just play with my fingers no nails um, but I find you know I try and keep them I don't know if you can see them um, I try and keep my nails quite short and I try and keep them at kind of an angle so they're shorter this end and they're a bit longer this end and when I play I play at this sort of 45 degree angle when I pick so I'm able to kind of with a small adjustment to my to my finger I'm able to sort of have more more nail if I do this and have less nail if I bring it up like this you know I mean it's super subtle but you can kind of hear the difference um, and having that control literally at my fingertips uh, can be very very useful you know in certain times uh, so that's what I do I actually I don't want to go too much into nails because that's a whole nother avenue I don't want to go into too much but um, I actually just have natural nails for years I used like fake nails like false nails you like you um, there's this these various companies that you that are specially for um, guitarist nails I think it was a company in the US they're really good they provide you with all the material that you need and um, you basically have to cut it to the shape of your nail you glue it on it's a whole it's a whole procedure and thing uh, and then you you put on this like fiberglass type stuff and you put on the the super glue and then you have to file it and nail it and polish it and, um, it's a really good sound it's like and your your nails are super hard um, but I found that my real nails were just like disintegrating they would just like be really really thin and weak um, Sometimes I go back to the to the other nails, but I for for now for a few years I've just kept without the false nails and just had my natural nails. Sometimes I do break a nail and uh, I might have to pop on a, a fake nail, but um, for the moment, you know, and they're a lot harder now. Um, I, sometimes I put on some stuff um, just to sort of harden them a little bit, but. Um, you know they're they're a lot harder now. I don't have anything covering them. I think it's the fact that I had stuff covering them and they couldn't breathe uh, and stuff like this. But anyway, that's a whole another <laughs> another subject. But I would the point was that I that um, it can add a lot of tone whether you play with nails or whether you play with just your your skin on your fingers or whether you play with um, plectrums. You know. Um, so this is what I do. I keep them very short. I keep them at an angle so I can have control over whether I want more skin or more nail. And this is all to do with the the tone, and that I feel I feel is also a big plays a big part in in the dynamics. Um, there's been a few comments and stuff. Let's go to the the comment section. Uh, greetings from Turkey. Have a nice stream. Ah, oh, nice one. Thanks. From Turkey. Awesome. Uh, Patrick says, I use my fingertips mostly, but keep a long thumbnail for strumming. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. I didn't realize that. So you keep, so you don't have any nails at all on your fingers, but you just, you just have your thumbnail and you strum with your thumbnail. That's cool. Yeah, that's, uh, the thumb is like the strongest nail ever. It never breaks. Um, the thumb's very, very useful having that nail. I try not to keep mine too long because it can it can sound very quite harsh sometimes. I find. Uh, yeah. And Hans says I pick 
with a pick and my fingers at the same time. Ah, yeah. Okay, cool. So do you have do you have a, a thumb like a ring thumb pick or do you are you one of these? What's it called? Hybrid picking. So you play and then so you hold it with your two your thumb and your finger and then you this kind of thing. If you know what I mean, <laughs> does that make sense? And then you you pick with your your other fingers. That's really cool. Um, but Han says again, I wish I played with just my fingers. I think the tone is better. Okay, yeah, interesting. That's interesting. Just your your the skin on your fingers. I I find it's a hard one, you know. I, I really like the tone of just the just the the skin you know on your fingers um, a guitarist I really really admire um, which I mention almost on every live stream Kelly Joe Phelps uh, sadly passed away um, but he he never used any nails he was a, a skin picker. Uh, and that, you know, that he managed to get a really nice tone out of his guitar. Um, and I did, because he was a, such a big influence on me, I actually copied him. Um, and I did that for a while. I did that as well for a while. But then I started, I did start exploring with fingernails. And I just find when I do want a little bit of this kind of volume it, it it does help me with my playing you know um but you're right i do i do really really like the tone of just the skin you know it's a very it's a, a really nice warm sound that's why i try not to have my my nails too long because i don't like the sound of just pure nails um on the strings it can sound quite harsh sometimes yeah um yeah dog food dog food studios i'm just gonna say patrick is that all right <laughs> instead of saying dog food studios every time <laughs> i had false nails uh, i had false nails shatter during a gig and never trusted them again uh yeah yeah um that's that's not good shatter okay uh, so, so Patrick plays quite a lot more, um, sort of, how do I put it? Harder techniques than I do. Uh, so I'm not surprised you shattered, uh, <laughs> your nails during a gig. Okay. And you also say, yeah, that's how I've always done it. Pretty much. I chew my nails too much if they're long. <laughs> All right, yeah, okay. A hand says hybrid, yeah, yeah, hybrid, okay. Right. Mike Dawes, I believe, too. Yeah, Mike some uh Mike Dawes does does hybrid picking as well. Is that what you mean? Really? I thought he had nails. I don't know have to check that that's really cool yeah there's lots of hybrid picking players um it's uh i've i've never really i haven't played with a plectrum in so long i don't think i could uh i don't think i could do it but it's really cool who else does it maybe um a guy called blair dunlop he he was on the the same record label as me as well. Um, uh, he does a lot of uh, he does a lot of hybrid picking. Yeah, there's a few players. There's definitely lots of players that do that. Oh, just f oh, he just uses Mike Dawes. Just uses his fingers. Really, I'm not sure. Yeah. I always thought that he had nails, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. He could. I have to check that. 
He's an amazing player. He uses all these crazy percussive techniques, yeah. Um, uh, oh, another hybrid player is um, that player that uh, Mike Dawes plays with. Uh, Tommy Emanuel, of course. Tommy Emanuel. I'm pretty sure he does hybrid picking as well. He, he, I've seen him with a pick for sure. He's, he's an amazing player. He does... Uh, amazing uh, use of dynamics with his with his guitar. Um, really, really got a nice player. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about dynamics. If you've just joined the live stream, um, and I've just been talking about how why I feel like they're so important to me, um, and I try. I try not to add too many techniques into my playing because I really want to focus on the dynamics um, and having control over my right hand as well um, and over the different fingers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play one more song uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll look at if anybody has any questions or comments or anything like that, just drop them down and I'll... We'll talk about it after the song. Um, I'll do another demonstration of uh, of um, of dynamics. And this song is called "The River," and it's a it's a song that I wrote about various different people that I met. When I was literally living on a river, I lived in a, on a canal boat in London, and uh, yeah, it's about various different people that I met along the way. And a lot of people think that living on a canal boat is very um, romantic and and all this, and it's it's uh, it can be, but a lot of the time it's just very harsh living, especially if you live live on it full time. Um, and I was rebuilding the boat from the inside completely as well whilst living on it whilst trying to be a musician <laughs> I wouldn't do it now with kids but uh, yeah it was fun in my 20s you know uh, and this is the song that I wrote about it and I'm going to try and add listen out for the dynamics that I'm um, that I'm going to be introducing in this song here we go a drunk middle-aged mum she had children when she was too young now is something you might be surprised three different kids from three different guys she spends her time drinking away drinking special brew every day how does she end up this way people King Pass would say Down by the river You may find nothing but tits and time Here at the river We all are just a bunch of No man, 
No boats where they used to have plans Now all he has is a very long beard Keeping him awake Oh, all his tears He has one friend in all the world His old dog with a long grey coat He never sees the light of day Just waiting for time to pass away Down by the river, you may find nothing but tits and tat. Here at the river, we all are just a bunch of river. He's a dad, he's a nice guy A young father that doesn't know why He can't see his poor little son Because of all these things this kid's mother has done He has no money, no job He'd do anything to earn a few bucks You look at him and you might judge But all he feels for his son is Love. Oh, down by the river, you may find nothing but tits and tie. Here at the river, we all are just a bunch of river. That was the river, which you can uh, you can also hear on my second album, A Day Like Tomorrow. Um, so yeah, so we've been uh, we've been looking at dynamics today, and hopefully you can uh, you got something out of this live stream, and hopefully you heard there what. Um, the dynamics that I was using in in that song. Uh, I also did another one of my songs earlier as well. Uh, we're just going to go to the to the to the comments now, uh, just as we're ending the plane, um, and just answer a few last questions. If you have any last questions or comments or anything like that, um, yeah, as I say, we're talking about dynamics and. If you let us know in the comments if you uh, how how you use dynamics and uh, what kind of techniques that you use um, to, to sort of add dynamics in in your playing. I talked about hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, and vibrato, and also the tone of the guitar. I feel is uh, is a is a is a 
really a great way. Getting different textures out of your sound also adds to the overall kind of dynamics. Um, and we're talking about mainly, you know, acoustic guitar and fingerstyle guitar. Um, yeah, so Neil Warbank is here. Hey, Neil, how's it going? From Northern Ireland, how's it going? Good to see you. Good to have you on the live stream today. Yeah, Carlos is here. How's it going? Thanks so much. He says, beautiful, heart touching song. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, Hans, absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Great album to start, start to finish. Ah, oh, thanks so much. Appreciate that. Uh, Hans Herr also has an, a question. What gauge strings do you use? I use uh, 13 gauge strings. So they're medium gauge on acoustic guitar, Didario Phosphor Bronze. Um, and they're Didar I've used them for absolutely donkey's years. And uh, I just really like them, you know. They're quite, they can be quite bright, the Phosphor Bronze, you know. Um, especially when you just strung them. These are brand new strings. I just put them on yesterday. Um, and if you want the code for the strings, it's EJ17, they're called. Um, I know that because I just order them every time. Um, but that's also something, you know, I want to kind of look at, look at in a video as well, personally and for a video, is, you know, how much strings can also um, change the sound you know, and, and, and everything like that. Uh, yeah, adding harmonics, absolutely. Harmonics can be a really great way uh, to add a completely different texture, um, for sure, for sure. Harmonics are really great. Um, I don't tend to use harmonics too much during, during a song, although I do use it on another Monday. Um, I use harmonics from time to time. You know, um, I find it's, you know, with some of these players, like, uh, who did we talk about earlier? Um, Tommy Emmanuel, you know, the, he does this song. I can't even remember what it's called. Can't remember now. Doesn't matter. <laughs> he does this song where he just uses these, uh, these harmonics, you know, where he's basically playing with the left hand and then kind of putting the harmonics with the right hand on them. Um, it's really nice. It's really nice. I can't remember the song now. Maybe if someone remembers it, they can drop it in the chat. But uh, yeah, Tommy Emmanuel is is another player that, that really uses a lot of harmonics. And he uses different textures. Um, uh, he's, I find he's really good at, at dynamics as well. Um, but yeah, exactly. Somewhere over the rainbow. Thank you, Hans. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. He does this. Uh, and you can, I think it's on YouTube. You can just check it out. It's it's really amazing. But yeah, harmonics is a different way. It's just adding different textures. You know, um, I find all kind of adds to that dynamics as well. Um, but as I said before, you know, it's it's about control. It's about having control over your playing, over every little bit, you know. And I find the more uh, the more techniques I I use, then the harder it is to have control over every little aspect, if that makes sense. Um, so I try and keep, you know, and this is just a personal thing. I try and keep my playing um, as technical, technically simple as I can, although it might not seem that way. Um, but, you know, I don't use too many kind of percussion techniques or anything like this um, just because I like to keep things simple and, uh, yeah, really kind of focus on the dynamics. Um, yeah, so as we're landing the plane, thank you so much to everyone that joined on the live stream. And also, if you're watching the replay as well, you know, these these live streams, I kind of tend to look at one subject. I don't make them just a, a free fall, although we end up talking about different things, but I generally have. It's so uh, one kind of subject where I talk about and I go into, you know, so it's a bit more like a normal YouTube video. So 
for the people that also that find this on the replay you know people can watch this on the replay and hopefully get something out of it as well um not just live um although it's very nice to see people live and interact with people live as well um so as we conclude uh back to the very start what i talked about was what are we trying to do and we're trying to convey emotions we're trying to communicate emotions through our playing you know communicate what's going on in here emotion wise <laughs> and generate that through our fingertips and put that through the guitar um and i find the best way one of the best ways to do that is through dynamics so i really encourage you to uh use more dynamics really focus on the control of your playing and uh, try and use more dynamics in your playing i'm always trying to do it and trying to get a bit better at dynamics um through whatever you're playing you know whether you're singing whether you're playing guitar whether you're strumming it doesn't really matter um it's uh, just a great way to add emotion and depth to uh to your songs and to your playing so thank you everyone so so much i hope you have a wonderful day uh and hans says by the way check out eric johnson once upon a time in texas i'll do that i'll make sure i wrote it down all those and if anyone else has any um any players that they can recommend just drop them in the chat in the comments um so people even on the replay you know can can have a look and and check them out for people uh, for musicians that that really use a lot of dynamics we've talked about a few here um that we can all go and check out because that already gives you know inspiration as well and i'll check out eric's john eric johnson once upon a time in texas for sure nice one thank you so much to everyone and have a wonderful day and i will see you in the next live stream next saturday Bye.